So I will start, as I said, with a presentation uh, on Com Music yesterday. On, on my keynote, um, I talked very generally about uh, Com Music. And I guess uh, most of you were there, so uh, there is no point in repeating that. But let me just at least uh, mention the, the, the objectives of the project. Uh, the objective of the project is to bring this culture specificity, this cultural perspective into uh, engineering, into a specific case of uh, music computing. So the idea is to focus on the aspects of the, the music, of the audio signal, of, the, of all the information around music, but really from a cultural perspective. And uh, uh, therefore, with that, we want to uh, uh, be able to automatically describe music. One of the major aims of uh, this field is how can we automatically be able to handle large collections of music and generate information around that automatically and don't have to do it manually and have to label everything uh, manually. And uh, one of the problems is that the, this type of information that is available nowadays, we have the type of information that we have in a CD cover or that we on a, on a, co on a concert uh, program, who is the composer or who is the, the performer or what is the raga. And then at the same time, we know about the audio signal and we have some information that we can analyze from the audio signal. But those two informations, they normally are quite, are difficult to, 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 to unite, are difficult to cross over. Uh, so we, we have the audio, we have the name of the artist, but there is an, a very, uh, it's very difficult to try to understand what makes that artist make that sound and what is the relation between the sound of the artist and the name of, or the, the, for example, of the garana of, uh, of that particular artist. And that's one of the major aims of the, the project and a lot of the research that is being done in our field is to really cover this relationship between semantic and audio information. Uh, and in the case of the project, in order to do that, we are focusing on five musical repertoires. We are focusing on Hindustani and Carnatic music, and that's where we are going to be focusing on this workshop. But we are also working on uh, uh, Turkish uh, music. And we have not started working on it, but we will be working on Andalusi music from the Arab tradition and on Han music of China. And those are the art music traditions of this country. And also, I showed yesterday some of the issues that we are doing, doing, and now we are doing a lot of data gathering. We need data to understand these issues. We also are interacting with musicologists to, to validate our approaches. And we are starting doing a lot of audio analysis to understand these issues. And anyway, we'll talk briefly about uh, some of these issues. So let me just talk more specifically then about what are the real research issues that we are dealing with. And the first one uh, about intonation. Okay, uh, intonation normally uh, we normally refer in our field by tuning. The, the, the issue of tuning when you uh, when you sing or when you tune an instrument or when you play any uh, any other uh, instrument. And but tuning uh, maybe is not the right term. Uh, a better term is intonation. Uh, I think specifically we, if we want to consider uh, the, the issues for Indian music. Indian music, uh, as uh, I guess you all know, doesn't uh, use the, the equal tempered scale, doesn't use a, a set of discrete pitches like uh, we tend to use more in the West. So the concept of tuning and intonation has to be approached differently than in the West. Uh, and the concept that there is no discrete frequencies requires to come up with analysis techniques and ways of representing the, the tuning differently. So the issue is how. How can we express the concept of tuning? And maybe then an important thing is to define the concept of intonation. And this is uh, thinking a little bit before this talk. That's what I, I came out with a, a sort of a initial definition of, of what we mean by intonation. And these are the pitches used by a performer in a piece. Okay? So an intonation is piece specific. You would sing in a raga, and you would uh, do something specific during a, a, a piece. A 
and you will be using some features. There, there will not be discrete features. It will not be a discrete set of features. So how can we describe the, the pitches uh, the, that a given singer or a given uh, performer uses and what engineering tools we can develop to describe that and then to compare different singers, to compare different styles of music, different musical repertoire. So that's a, a very important issue that we have started working on and that we will be continuing working on. Related with that is the issue of melody. If you look at, uh, at any uh, book on, on, on music, especially on and most of them, the concept of melody has this very Western, again, uh, perspective. It talks about tones and sequence of tones that uh, make up uh, a music. And I think that's not appropriate to, uh, for Indian music, for example. The concept of discrete tones does not exist. Uh, uh, a melody is a continuous varying uh, information pitch that changes and uh, therefore the concept of discrete sequence of tones is not. So we have to find a new terminology, new ways of referring to melody. And so I thought that maybe something like this is more appropriate to, to talk about the melody as a temporal pitch variation performed in a piece. And one of clear aspect of melodies is the concept that there are patterns, there are repeated repetitions of things that that's what allow us to identify the the, the aspects and, and see relationships and, and express and communicate some idea. We need to uh, develop patterns, repeat patterns, and this you find in all musical repertoire, in all musical cultures, the idea of a melodic pattern. It's a, it's a fundamental uh, concept that is repeated. And we have to understand that. So for me, this concept of melody, it's a little bit more general than what we normally use. And it's more appropriate than to uh, be applied to the musical uh, repertoire that we're talking about. Uh, the rhythm is, I think, is even harder. Because uh, rhythm um, in the West, you normally refer with a set of terms and meter and, uh, and tempo and beat and et cetera, that I don't think they apply completely to uh, many musical repertoire. Well, first of all, I have to say, just already this issue about dividing concepts is completely, strictly speaking, is artificial. I mean, there is no way we can, uh, a tabla player is, an, a, perform, is a, a percussion instrument, but at the same is a melodic instrument. So we cannot say, that uh, the, the, the tabla player is just doing a rhythm. A, a tabla player, in fact, is doing phonetic uh, uh, expression, is doing melodic expression, is doing rhythmic expression. So a, a, a lot of the things that, in fact, Indian music brings to the world is this idea that many of these concepts are united and things cannot be separated. That's a very important thing. And of course, from an engineering perspective, we need, we are forced to divide things, to, uh, to approach things from an analytical perspective. And that's difficult. And that distorts the reality. Because after all, music is an is a, is a all uh, communication uh, expression that is, doesn't yield easily to this analytical division. But we have to try. I mean, if we have to bring computers into music, we have to do it. But we always have to be conscious that this is a simplification. Somehow it can be a naive perspective into some of the things. But if we are aware that we are doing that, then it's OK. I think it's a good way to advance. But we have to make sure that we are aware of this limitation. And that where we're talking with rhythm cannot be completely independently uh, analyzed from melody. Okay? But rhythm is clearly the arrangement of sounds in time Again, creating patterns. The pattern issue is a, is a very fundamental aspect in music. And given that I don't like to call music a language, because I think uh, it's, it's an expression, media, but it doesn't have a such defined set of rules like language. So I don't, I don't like to use the concept of language, but it's, it's definitely a means of expression that has its own coherence. And a lot of this coherence relates with patterns with establishing patterns, establishing relationships between concepts that people can grasp 
uh, explicitly or implicitly, and that allows us to understand some, some communication uh, expression. So anyway, the rhythm are patterns, and basically they're patterns related with a strong and weak uh, uh, sounding uh, elements or sounding sounds. So the idea is to focus on the, the, the rhythm from that point of view. So again, the tabla then in this respect is not just rhythm. Tabla is much more than uh, a rhythmic instrument. And then, so these would be the three basic elements that we are, uh, want to study from a very musical perspective. There are many more. But apart from that, there are other aspects that makes uh, music what it is. And a very important part of, uh, of what uh, makes music what it is, is the concept of community. Uh, uh, music can only be understood by the community that is around it. So we need to understand that community if we want to understand music. And we have started working on that. Well, I think to, to, to be fast, so let me just try to cut short. And then finally, uh, make out of that from an engineering perspective into something that is useful. And the idea of something that is useful by having analyzed all these is developing a browsing tool, so developing a, a system that allows to discover the different aspects of a given musical repertoire. So a lot, one way to, to think about what is the use of all this research is that through that, someone that is not too, ex, too much of an expert in a given repertoire or has too much repertoire to really know by heart everything you have in your hard disk, or in a, in, a, in a CD store, uh, technology can help you discover a lot of these nuances of these uh, aspects, rhythmic aspects, melodic aspects, community aspects, intonation aspects, and many others that exist in a given musical repertoire. And that's the aim of the project. So let me just now then put examples so that you get an idea about what uh, these issues mean. Intonation, uh, again, uh, when we talk about intonation, typically we talk about discrete uh, frequencies, and that's not right. So this is, uh, well, this in fact is a uh, interval histogram, but, uh, uh, but this is a representation of pitch that I think it's a little bit better than the concept of a discrete set of frequencies. Because this, well, basically here what we have is an octave. So an octave is a unit of pitch which quite makes sense, even though I believe in Indian music uh, that should be released and we should really talk about the three octaves that are normal in, in so we should not restrict the concept of, uh, of a single octave as a unit of representation. And here, what you're seeing is the, the, the relative frequency of different pitches. Well, here is of different intervals, but basically you can think of the different pitches. This is a typical representation of someone playing a Western piano. If you play a piano, all the black and white keys are located in very discrete frequencies that are equally distant one from another. They are not completely equal because uh, the tuning is not perfect, so you get some distribution around every frequency. Another type of tuning that was used, in fact, in the, in the West in the Middle Ages, and that is common in some, in some performance practices, is what is called just intonation, which is a tuning that preserves some of the intervals, the natural inter intervals better. It doesn't distort the fifth. It doesn't distort the major third. Uh, and then it requires to have many more tones than just the 12 equal tempered tones. So this is a distribution of a keyboard being tuned to equal uh, to just intonation. If you look at uh, at uh, Carnatic and Hindustani music, this is a paper that uh, the first paper, in fact, that we published about uh, com music, uh, and that was presented at Izmir uh, a few months ago. We tried to see, okay, uh, a singer in Hindustani in Carnatic music, what tuning, what intonation do they use? So we took uh, the alaps alapanas of uh, both uh, Carnatic and Hindustani music, and we took uh, quite, a, quite a number of them, and we did the same analysis. So it's, it's an it's a interval histogram. So 
so that means that, that it's, it does, it's not affected by the location of the tonic. Uh, and you see um, the, the Carnatic uh, distribution and the Hindustani. And it's clearly different. Uh, we have some ideas why they're different. I think we made some too much simplifications and some errors that we are now trying to understand. And after being here for a month, we understand better. So I, I don't think this is completely correct. But it definitely gives us uh, a view that the way that Carnatic musicians sing and Hindustani musicians sing, and this is something that I don't think that many people are conscious about, is quite different. So that's, I think it, by doing this engineering approach, we can bring some light into some things that maybe people are not so conscious and it's quite relevant for music. Yes. Oh, yeah, it's a, this is, this is, an, this is an, a published article, and yeah, the slides will be all available, and we make a video, and they will be all available. Well, these are, these are hundreds of recordings, so it's difficult. This is a statistical data, so it's impossible to, to get, uh, I mean, we are, not, we are now making it everything available. This was a sort of a preliminary test. We did a whole bunch of recordings, but yeah, we will make everything uh, available and it uh, is explained. Yeah, yeah. But this is, it's, the, the problem is some of these things are impossible to listen to because it's hundreds of them. And, and this is only makes sense when you do this very huge statistical uh, analysis. But anyway, let me just try to finish because in Maka music and, and uh, Baris Boskud will will talk about more. This has been done quite uh, quite well and with very good results to understand the Macam structures and using pitch histograms for Macam. But anyway, Baris will will talk about that. About melody in uh, Turkish music, uh, they have a notation, and it's very much a common uh, uh, way now to use this type of notation, which was inspired by Western notation, but adapted to some specific things. But of course, you always need to compare with what the actual musicians are doing. So this is the pitch contour of someone playing this, and it's clearly uh, a little bit different. And so what, it, what we are interested in is trying to understand melody, both from kind of the score, but also from the practice of what musicians are doing. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, Carnatic music, and Hema Murthy will talk about that, uh, the, a very important aspect of melody, how we understand it, is all the gamakas. I'm trying to understand these uh, variations that the musicians do with the uh, gamakas. So anyway, so uh, Hema Murthy will talk more about that. Rhythm, we haven't started working much about it, but there is a lot of work and, uh, in the Turkish team. They have been working on, on rhythm analysis of Turkish music, of trying to, from the audio signal, kind of find the structure in the Indian music case would be uh, and define the, the Tala cycle and the different intra relationships of a, a Tala cycle. So that's very important. In terms of the communities that I mentioned, what we have been working is not so much on, on the specific communities for Indian music. We have a community that uh, we have, we're an online community, which is called Free Sound, which has like 2 million people that share sound. And through that, we have tried to learn the concept of what does it mean a community of users that shared a given sonic repertoire. And from that, there is a lot of very interesting things that we don't have now time to talk about. But the, the concept of tags and representations that express the ideas that a given community has. And what we have been working is in on tag propagation and on, on the ideas of how, by learning the a given community and learning what vocabulary, what tax a given community uses, how we can describe that and use that to then propagate that knowledge into other sounds. And finally, the, the concept of browsing, we have been developing a, a browser, and now briefly we'll have a, a short demo of it, that uh, with a web interface, you have access to all this data and analysis data that we have started to work on and that we will be work on. So now I will just want to show you uh, um, the, a mock-up of uh, um, 
and then we'll have the, the real thing. So we have not started working. We don't have yet, uh, of course, a, a working system because we have only been working a few months. But uh, whenever I talk about, no, it's okay. So, but it's very difficult to communicate what we want to do to people that are not so much in the field. So I felt that it was good to come up with uh, some visual uh, mock-up that can show us some of these ideas. So you can imagine once we have all this technology in place, what someone will be able to do with this. Okay? Um, it's, it's difficult to, to uh, really put it together. And of course, we don't know what technological results we will get. So it's, it's difficult to, to see what we're going to have. But let's say uh, this is a uh, uh, the browser, and uh, we, as a, we will show the real one already working with a very minimal functionality. So we have the five collections of uh, our music that we work on. And um, every collection has a specific, you can, we call them filters, specific concepts with which you can navigate through the collection. If you ever have used iTunes, or you have navigate with uh, search in Amazon, uh, the, the fields that you have in any of these systems is artist, album name, and that's about it. Okay? Clearly, that's not a very meaningful and useful way to navigate if we want to discover new things and we want to learn throughout. So imagine if we could, and we will, have that uh, all these kind of things, are, of course, are about the obvious things with the lead performer, the lead instrument, the accompanist, but things about the, the raga that is being uh, played, the, the lay that is, uh, uh, that is in, the, in the piece or the section, or a solo section within, or navigate through the garana or through the tala. So this you click, and it shows all the talas that we have in the collection. And then once you click at something, for example, if you want to say, I just want to look at evening ragas. So you click at raga time, and then automatically you say, OK, uh, I'm going to navigate through the evening ragas of the collection. And then you say, OK, and within evening ragas, I just want to look at whatever piece, uh, pieces we have on uh, this particular raga. And not only that, I want to see songs that have a tabla solo. So uh, you click, and now since we don't have that much of a big a collection, there is only one concert by Ravi Shankar that fulfills that, uh, that requirement. So it appears this one. Uh, and then uh, it, uh, you can see the details of that, and it tells you all the details of that particular recording. So this is information that we gather automatically from Music Brains and from some other sources, from Wikipedia too, and from the, the analysis that we do. So you have all this information. That's quite very useful, much more than what you have currently in, in iTunes. And you have um, highlighted uh, uh, concepts uh, that are linked to other repositories. So for example, you want to click, OK, I want to see uh, a Sakir Hussein bio. So you click. And it automatically gets the information from Wikipedia, and it displays the information from Wikipedia. Okay. And then you want to uh, look even more here, more inside. And OK, I want to look at this tabla solo and try to understand it a little bit better. So it displays the, the tabla solo. It displays the spectrogram. It displays, you're not seeing here, it displays the balls that have been identified automatically from that. And you, of course, you can play it. <clears throat> and it displays the relationships. There has been some relationships that he's playing, some patterns that he's imitating in different parts of this solo. So you are able to see these relationships. Uh, and well, there is many more things that you could do, but for example, one of the key things that we want to do is that then, okay, you are looking at one of these patterns, and you can say, okay, this pattern of uh, Sakir Hussein, I am sure it has been imitated by many tabla players of Hindustani music. So show me all the other tabla solos that use this particular pattern. So you click here, 
and you click similarity, and it will show you all the similar uh, uh, sections of that uh, particular pattern that other people have imitated. Okay? So that's a, a kind of a, an idea of the kinds of things that hopefully we will be having in a, uh, in a while. Or in the case of, of Turkish music, well, the same thing. But in Turkish music, for example, well, there is the concept of makam. So here you see the specific things that are uh, specific of the Turkish music. And you see uh, the concept of compositions very clearly, much more than in Hindustani music, for example. So you look for a work, which is a composition of a particular composer. You see all the information of that particular piece of music. And then you see all the recordings of that particular piece of music. And then, uh, again, you can uh, look at Wikipedia for uh, this particular recording is performed by this tambour player. So you get the information of that tambour player. And then you display the particular, a particular phrase that you're interested. You're displaying the score, because there is, uh, as part of uh, in our database, we have all the scores. And we also have the analysis. And you can see here, it displays from the score, the actual performer did something different. It, uh, it, it changed some of the notes. It played them differently. Uh, so you can automatically analyze that. And of course, you can hear. So this is a tambour, and it, it just plays exactly this phrase, and it tells you that compared with the score, he actually modified some of the notes. Anyway, and that's uh, the idea, and I guess we could uh, quickly do a, a demonstration of the, of the real uh, browser. Yeah, there is one display that is what we call uh, enhanced listening or uh, e-listening. The idea is that you can play it, and while it's playing, in fact, it's the dynamically uh, showing all these relationships. Because when you play, there is a lot more information that you can show. Of course, of course, of course. So this is uh, the actual browser. And, and Gopal, who is a student in uh, Barcelona with me, he has been starting. And in the last few weeks, they have been quickly putting together this uh, browser to show that uh, this is not just wishful thinking, but uh, that it actually works. So uh, we call this version 0.001. So you can see that it's very uh, In the final version of the mockup, you can see that there are multiple Is that this we will be it will be a web interface it will be available to everyone so 
So uh, hopefully in a few months uh, we will make it uh, already. And this basically, as the project evolves, this browser will keep adding all these uh, ideas and functionalities that we were talking about. And uh, right now we only have a few hundred CDs, uh, but hopefully uh, much more information will be will be gathered and will be uh, shown. Okay, um, so that was my uh, my introduction and talk about some of the ideas of the Club Music. We'll talk about more about that. So now I would like uh, that uh, Professor Priti Rao uh, um, continues uh, with the part of Hindustani music. So let's uh, set up and we'll continue. <laughs> 